it was just a really special time when you look back on it. And it was some hard times, some hard times. But it had not had been for all the times. I don't think I'd be the person I am today. It was, it was really a family, and like they say, a community in a community. But I always wanted to go to Second Ward because my sister and a couple of my brothers went to Second Ward. When I went in 1958, uh, the uh, freshmen or the underclassmen was in the basement of Second Ward building, you know, and I wasn't used to three-story building, you know. And we went over there from First Ward School to uh, Second Ward. And we were just the little peons there. It was great. I waited so long to go to Second Ward. I wanted to go to Second Ward. That, that was my ambition. My whole family had gone to Second Ward. And uh, I couldn't wait to get there. So I had been in the schools uh, quite a bit. Um, all the, uh, uh, not all the instructors, but most of the instructors lived right around me. And uh, it was a good thing. And it was a bad thing because uh, I wasn't always perfect. And it was, you know, everybody looked forward to going to Second Ward. I'm going to be straight up, you know, from my side of town because my mother went there, my aunts and everybody. So it was just a joy just to be able to go to Second Ward. I enjoyed going. I didn't live about five minutes from there. and. That's all I thought about going to Second Ward when I was young, because all my people went to Second Ward. So I was looking forward to going. You know, uh, when they first integrated, I went to uh, Miles Park uh, for orientation, you know, and I was supposed to have been going over there, and I went over there, and I just didn't like the environment. It just didn't feel right. And uh, I hurried up and went right back to Second Ward. You know, because that's, that's the school. It had been embedded in me that that's where I wanted to go. But the other thing that uh, I remember uh, quite vividly was my uh, commencement here. Uh, I, I remember uh, having, uh, having heard our uh, choir sing the song, No Man Is An Island. And that song just sort of resonated with me for the rest of my life. No man is an island, no man stands alone. Each man's joy is joy to me, each man's grief is my own. We need one another. So I will defend. Each man is my brother, each man is my friend. The classroom was, was $15? No, it was, I, we, you, it was $25 when you got there. It was like $15 or $10, and I didn't have that money. And there's one of my buddies, Robert Watson, he called his mother Rabbit. And the first time I've ever skipped school, I tried to get a job to my classroom. Mr. Grisby could help me, and that next day when I came, they thought something had happened to me. And I said, then I cried, cried. I said, what's wrong? He said, well, you cannot go to class until you tell me where you were yesterday. So after about three hours, I said, I was trying to get money from my ring. Robert heard about it. He lived maybe five houses down, told his mom, his mother bought my class ring. That was the village that we talked about. Well, one thing, I'm not only in Second Ward, I learned it in my church, to love everybody, I don't <clears throat> care what color their skin is, love everybody and be kind to everybody because kindness will come back to you when you show love. I, I, we spent a lot of time at Pearl Street. Let's say we went down, the football team practiced at Pearl Street, the baseball team practiced at Pearl Street, and uh, we played our games there. Our baseball games were played at Pearl Street Park. It was the first black park in the city for in Brentwood County for, for black people. We, we used it for our baseball games and our football field, because we didn't, we didn't have a baseball field and a football field at Second Ward. And that's where everybody went. Like we played on Pearl Street Park when we were growing up like every day. Because we, we didn't have anywhere else to play. 
I can picture when the guys would come off the field in the afternoon and they'd be so dusty, so dirty. But I could never understand why they had to, now that Pearl Street is beautiful, why they couldn't put some grass or something down there for them to practice on, they wouldn't. And that was the only place they had to practice. So, you know, I didn't like to see them come up this, walk up this street all dirty and dusty after practicing on that dirty ground. Well, it was some grass, but it wasn't like a real good grass. grass you know, because it was a baseball field, a softball field was there. Well, we went down and played football, we come back. It was just like clay, a little bit of grass, made us tougher. You know, we enjoyed going down there because that's where everybody would go to watch us practice. In fact, the whole thing is about Brooklyn. Brooklyn made Second War. See, everybody want to talk about Second War, but it was Brooklyn itself, the neighborhood. What people say that we need now, we had then, a village. So all the churches, every church in Charlotte, that black church was right there in Brooklyn. We had five churches within a three block radius. And all the teachers, all the principals, everything was right in that neighborhood. All the little stores were still there in place, you know. You stopped there and get your little candy and everything before you get to school, you know, because they didn't, you know, we would play hook or whatever, you go to, the, go to the stores, but you had to get it before then, you know, because they would lock the gate, close the gates up. It was, a, it was a, a sort of like a little soda shop where yeah. when you come to school that morning, that's one of the first spots you would hit, you know, and everybody would gather there and, you know, and just talk and mingle and then you would go to school. And this is great memories to come back in here. When you come in here, we had gym here, but you come in here when there's a pep rally, oh, this place was, it was jamming. Oh, this gym? We used to have sock hops in here? Oh boy, sock hops, pep, pep rallies, and plays up on the stage back there. And this, this was a fun place, the gym, oh yeah. It was a fun place. Second World was sort of like a community of, um, of um, uh, students with family as a nucleus. I mean, you know, the, people came from First Ward and uh, Third Ward and Fourth Ward and Cherry, but they all walked. It was a long way to walk, you know, to go to school, but we were determined we were going to go to Second Ward and get that education. Once you cross Trey Street, and it was like you get to Fourth Street, then you start down, it was like going down the hill to Third Street, and then you're coming back up to Second Street, and then there was Second was sitting up there on First Street on the hill, and it was just magnificent. They're like, I can't wait to get up there, you know. I hope they will hold on to it. I hope they will always remember this and tell their children about it. They hear me talk about it all the time, and I have pictures, and I show them pictures of when I was here. I loved singing the, the alma mater because it was like a letter that was written in the Second Ward, and whenever I get a chance, with my no singing self, I try to sing it to sort of bring attention, you know. Dear Second Ward, our alma mater, we pledge ourselves to thee. We love you, er, as long will we go, if thou our guide will be. I don't know, you boy, mm. but ever be. I, ooh, it just touches. It's, it's mm.